Today, we're going to cover absolutely everything you need to know about strings for coding interviews, including important methods, time and space complexities, and at the end, we'll do a string question together. Coding interviews often ask questions regarding manipulation of strings, and these questions are notorious for being difficult, mainly because people don't take advantage of Python's built-in string methods. Before we cover those, let's make sure we understand exactly how a string is implemented in Python. Although this is oversimplifying it by quite a lot, a string is effectively just an array of single letters. For example, the string banana is implemented just like this array. So, if you wanted to access the first letter of a string, you would do it the same way you access the first item in an array. However, there are tons of string-specific functions that come built into Python to save us time when working with strings. For example, if we wanted to capitalize every letter manually, we would need a hash map mapping every lowercase letter to an uppercase letter, looping through each letter in the string and changing it to its uppercase version. Using a simple Python method called .upper, we can get the uppercase version of the string immediately. This is the real power behind using Python for coding interviews. It saves you time and simplifies many problems. Now, let's cover the important string methods. Firstly, we have all the methods related to casing. .upper makes every letter uppercase. Dot lower makes every letter lowercase. Dot capitalize converts the first letter to uppercase and the rest to lowercase. Dot is upper returns true if every letter is already uppercase and false otherwise. Dot is lower returns true if every single letter is lowercase and false otherwise. The next category of methods are the ones related to numbers and other characters. Is alpha returns true if every character in the string is a letter and false otherwise. Is numeric returns true if every character in the string is a number and false if they're not. And lastly, is alnum returns true if every character in the string is either a letter or a number and false otherwise. This excludes all symbols like spaces, dashes, colons, and more. A few other basic but important methods that you should know include count, which returns the number of times a character appears in a string, find, which returns the lowest or first index where a character appears in a string, and rfind, which returns the highest or last index where the character appears in a string. Now we'll move on to the most important part of working with strings, which is slicing and formatting. Slicing strings just refers to being able to extract certain parts of strings, and formatting refers to being able to manipulate strings to the format we want them in. Starting with slicing, this works basically the same way as taking subarrays. For the string banana, if we want NAN, we would take the string from the second index all the way up to the fifth index. If you add an additional number into this, you can change how much each step increments the index by. Again, for the string banana, if we now want AAA, we would just take the string from the first index all the way up to the sixth index, stopping just before the sixth index. And now we are going to be indicating that we're increasing by two indices at each step. Now that we've covered slicing, let's cover formatting. For formatting, there are a few important methods that you need to work with. Strip removes leading and trailing white spaces from a string. Replace takes an old and a new value, and it basically replaces all of the old values with the new values. For example, if we did string.replace apple with orange, it would replace every occurrence of apple in the string with orange. Split takes in a separator and basically splits the string into a list of substrings based on the separator you've provided. The most common example of this is either using commas or spaces. Join is actually something that works with a list or any other iterable. You provide something that you want it to join each item in the list with, and it creates a string separating each item in the list with whatever you've provided. Lastly, f-strings allow you to put expressions inside of string literals. To practice what we've learned, let's solve this leak code problem. Our goal here is to check if a string is a palindrome, meaning that after you convert all of the uppercase letters to lowercase letters and remove non-alphanumeric characters, we want to know if it's going to read the same forward and backward. Now, we can do this literally just using everything that we have learned in this video. For starters, we know that we want to convert all uppercase letters to lowercase letters because we'll be given something like a man, a plan, a canal, Panama, which is going to have some capital letters. 
So the first thing we want to do is take our string, which is represented by s, and make it lowercase, which we can do by the lovely method we've learned, dot lower. Now we've made the string lowercase. The next thing we have to do is remove all non-alphanumeric characters. Now we know that we can check if something is an alphanumeric character by doing the isAlNum method, but how can we actually remove all of them? The simplest solution here is just to iterate through each character in the string, check if it's an alphanumeric character, and remove it if it's not. To do this, we can simply write a for loop where we're checking each character in the string, and we check if this character is an alphanumeric character. Now, if it is an alphanumeric character, we want to keep it. If it's not, we won't keep it. But now we need somewhere to keep these new characters. So what I'm going to do here is just create a new empty string. And every time we reach an alphanumeric character in the original string, we can just add this to our new string. Now, if you look at this first example, we should have gone from something like this to something like this. All we need to do now is check if it's the same forward and backwards. Now this is going to be a little bit of a creative solution based on something you've already learned. We've talked about string slicing in which we know that using the format where the first value is the starting value, the second is the stop, and the third one is how many we're stepping at a time, we can manipulate strings very effectively. Well, what we want to do is simply reverse the string. We don't actually need to provide a starting point because we want to use the entire string and we don't want it to stop anywhere because we want it to go through the entire string. But instead of going through the entire string one at a time, we actually want it to go backwards or reverse through the string, which is by negative one step at a time. This will reverse our string. So all we have to do is check if the original string is equal to the reverse string. This will either return true or false and we can just return this for the entire function to get our solution. All right, so as you guys can see, we actually did not use the right method here. It is not LNUM, it is is LNUM. And I left this in here just to see if anyone would catch it and to show you that even though you might be working with methods a lot, there are so many to memorize, you're bound to mess up syntax. The important thing is that syntax is not the thing that is the biggest deal in the world. As long as you get the actual approach right and the logic correct, you can fix small syntax errors and then once you run it with the errors fixed, everything should run properly. Now we can submit it, and we've successfully solved the question using everything we learned in just the past couple of minutes in this video.